I hope you're having a great day and I hope you have a great weekend. It's been a while since I've gone live. I've been traveling. I'm in the beautiful city of Jaipur where I've come to see patients and also do an event on holistic health. Uh, I wanted to talk today, you know, as we said into the weekend, you know, my whole concept of intentional living. The weekend isn't just a weekend. While some of you may want to party, some of you may want to spend time with your family. What's the intention that we put into our weekend? I want to talk about what I've been observing over the last couple of weeks. For over 13 years now, I, when I started off with nutrition, okay, I thought it was everything. Two years later, I realized that nutrition is useless if we don't have our exercise right, our movement. A few months later, I realized how important sleep is and that nutrition and exercise is useless without quality sleep. A couple of months later, <clears throat> through my own experience of my patients, because I would see they had great nutrition, great exercise, great sleep, but they were still sick. They were getting sicker. Some of their diseases were progressing. Then I realized emotional wellness, and I realized that that is equally important. And today, 13 years later, at the top of the paradigm is emotional wellness and sleep, followed by exercise and nutrition. What I realize is with the amount of mental health issues today, emotional problems, relationship issues, diseases which are, which are caused because of suppressed emotions, people are struggling. All of us are struggling in some way or the other. Some people may be struggling less, some people may be struggling low, uh, uh, more. It's easy for all of us to judge other people's problems, call people lazy, tell people that, oh, look at you throwing your life away, smoking so much, drinking so much. But there's one thing I've learned. Everyone has their own reasons why they do it. Some people are going through such emotional voids in their life that the only thing that helps them is smoking or alcohol. And while we know it's bad, we need to be gentle. We need to be gentle with them because they're suffering. Or someone else has a, a vice which is bad. They're suffering as well. Everyone is suffering. The one thing I've realized in life is everyone is suffering. The billionaires, the multimillionaires, uh, people who are less privileged, sick people are suffering, healthy people are suffering, people at top positions in companies are suffering, people at the entry level are suffering. Everyone suffers. The point is, what do we do about it? How do we break worry? How do we, how do we break these destructive habits of worry, anxiety? It's becoming so much more. Most people already know why they're sick, why they're unhappy why they can't enjoy what they have in life because of anxiety, fear, insecurity, all of these problems. And of course, I've also been part of the system that says, hey, meditate, do your journaling, spend time in nature. And while all of these are very important techniques, some people go for stress management classes. Some people go for leadership events where they learn how to relax. Some people go into 45 days of meditation. But what I've realized is it doesn't really fix the problem completely. It doesn't. We get better at handling the problem and some people don't. The one thing that I've been leaning towards over the last couple of months very, very strongly is a deeper understanding of the word faith. Now, when I say faith, you don't have to be religious. And if you are, you know what your religion teaches you about faith. And if you're spiritual, you also know what spirituality teaches you about faith. And let's say you're not religious and you're not spiritual. But then you've got to trust something. You have faith. A lot of people say, look, I have no faith. I don't believe in God. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can believe in the universe. You can believe in nature. But you do have faith. You know the sun is going to rise. You know the sun is going to set. What is that? It's faith. You know your heart's going to beat. You don't have to remind yourself to breathe. It's faith in your body that it's going to do these little functions that keep you alive. So we all have faith in us. And I believe as we deepen our understanding and learning of the meaning, faith, it is so important to get us through worry. Because at this point in my life, if there's anything that can really break the habit of worry and anxiety, it is faith. Action and faith. I'm anxious about something. What can I do? Do it. There's something I can't control. Faith comes to the rescue. Prayer comes to the rescue. But like I said, if you don't pray, it's okay. You should have faith that you're being looked after, even if you're not looked after. But something's happening because without faith, there is only fear, despair, 
insecurity and it becomes worse and worse because this mind of yours starts to build those small little problems into bigger problems and then into stories, into illusions that never really have to worry. Go back to the past. Think about the things you worried the most about. Did it actually happen? In most cases, you'll say no. And that's why the beauty of faith, a deeper understanding of faith can literally, and I've been doing this for the last two months, okay? I have day-to-day -day stress, normal stuff. There are a couple of things in my life that I want clarity on. There are a couple of things in my life where I need a little more understanding and I would worry a little bit about this or get a little bit anxious, but then because of my lifestyle, my meditation, it would... It would be like a band-aid over it. But ever, ever since I've started practicing faith, and I just put that burden onto my God or the universe or whatever it is, I'm speaking in general, you just feel something lift off your chest. If you have faith and you put that burden, it doesn't mean I'm being lazy and I'm not taking actions. There are still some actions I need to take if I want that clarity, if I want that guidance, if I want that courage, if I want that strength. There are actions I need to take, but I take those actions and then I surrender with faith that whatever has to happen will happen. Whether I like it or not, it'll be right for me. And because we remind ourselves of this, we can get through life. Otherwise, we're micromanaging our feelings all the time. We're micromanaging everything from people to our children, to our employees, to our servants, to everyone. And that's why we're constantly resisting and we feel more and more out of control. But you put intention that, hey, this is how I want it to be. Faith, belief that it'll happen, and you take what actions you need to take. You take what actions you need to take. So when I further break down religion and spirituality, I am amazed that the commonalities between every religion is based on faith. Every religion talks about it. Surrender your burdens, surrender your worries, surrender your anxieties. Have faith. Your job is to live life and do what you can do. Do your best. The rest is faith. But without faith, we want to control everything. We want to control the outcome of the surgery even before it started, the outcome of how the chemotherapy will work, all of these things. And these are all decisions that come from a space of fear. Anything that comes from a space of fear would not be the best outcome. But when you put your faith in your doctor, you put your faith in the medicine you're taking, or just don't take it. If you don't have faith in it, don't do it because it's not going to work. But put your faith into it. Put your faith into it. That's an action. Putting faith into something, into someone. You're in a relationship. You're insecure all the time. Your partner will cheat on you. Your boyfriend will cheat on you. Your girlfriend will cheat on you. Your life is miserable and you're going to make your partner's life miserable. If they are, take the right action. If not, you've got to put faith in something so you can live and enjoy the relationship. I can't tell you how many young girls and boys and women and men spoil the most beautiful love because of insecurity. Maybe the insecurity is valid because they had past breakups or betrayals or cheating and stuff like that. It's fine. All of that happened. But now you've got to put faith. This is a new relationship. You've got to put faith that this can work out. Work towards it. Communication, actions, those are all actions. But if you don't have faith, you're going to constantly live in fear. And that's one of the reasons today why we're emotionally crumbling as a society. Everything is fear. Everything is insecurity. Everything is material, greed. All of these things space from when the heart is literally, literally shallow. And we don't have faith that, hey, it'll be good. We all have to take risks. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing, nothing is promised to us. Nothing at all. So when we live in expectation, we do away with faith. And then when we don't get what we want or we expect, we're disappointed. We blame life. We project. So here comes the importance of faith. I, re I, I ask all of you, if you're religious or spiritual, to deepen your understanding of faith. And maybe tonight, start transferring those burdens to whoever you pray to, whether it's God, the universe, the higher power, whatever it is. And if you don't pray, just have faith that, hey, there's something looking after you. You know it. All of us know there's something looking after us all the time. But we forget these things when bad things happen. And we realize, hey, no one's looking after us. But when good things are going, you have success, something's, you know, these, this is magic working for you. There is something or someone or an energy that is always looking out for us. Good or bad, doesn't matter. But we shouldn't forget about this. And that is what faith is all about. Putting your faith into a God, into whoever it is that you believe. But living with faith is one of the best ways to break your destructive habit of worry, anxiety, and chronic stress.
Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you. Thank you.